We don't want to work for you. We want to work for ourselves. And we don't define success by things like time or money. We define it through YOLO experiences. We're under 35, we're millennials, and we're Generation Z. If you're over 35, this may come as news to you, but the next generation isn't motivated by the idea of a steady paycheck. Millennial Branding did a survey in 2010 of over 10,000 students, and they found that 72% of high school students want to own a business someday. On top of that, 61% would rather be entrepreneurs than employees right out of college. Now, many employers misunderstand or dismiss this trend. They think we're looking for an easy way out, we're lazy, we're entitled, or, you know, we were inspired by Mark Zuckerberg and a select few, and we all think we can be just like them. And we're naive. One day, we'll wake up and realize that we have to clock in and clock out just like everyone else. They're wrong. We're entrepreneurial because we're driven by YOLO. You only live once. YOLO means that we don't want to waste our time doing things that we don't enjoy, because in today's world, with today's tools, we don't have to. We have an infinite number of options to achieve our goals. And frankly, companies aren't offering anywhere near the same rewards. So if you want to attract, retain, and engage the next generation, you need to understand how to capture this YOLO entrepreneurial spirit. And that's what I want to illustrate to you today. So who am I? I'm Crystal Kadakia, and I'm a millennial. That means I'm between the ages of 20 and 35. I'm also an entrepreneur, but I did not intend to be. I graduated with a degree in chemical engineering, and my only dream as the model Asian was to have a steady, stable job preferably at one company, for the rest of my life. Well, so I was on that plan, and I joined a Fortune 100 company, great company, started on in engineering, but then I quickly ran into some issues. First, I realized I was much more of a people person than a machine person. So I actually made the switch from engineering to being a training manager, where I then designed training for engineering. But then I started running into some serious health issues related to being in a computer cubicle environment eight hours a day, needed a little more flexibility, serious health issues. So I stepped back and I actually negotiated location free for some time. <coughs> However, no matter how many mentors I talked to or how great my manager was, I couldn't see a long-term career path for me there. I couldn't make the impact I had proven I could make in an environment that would enable my productivity versus disable it. That's what YOLO meant for me. Nobody, nobody was surprised when I left. I left because I felt like I had no choice there or anywhere. And so I started a consulting firm a few years ago, and today I work with HR executives to help them listen and understand the next generation's voice, and then incorporate that into the current policies, procedures, cultural, cultural programs, things like onboarding, leadership development, manager capability. I've talked to hundreds of millennials in Generation Z, and I continually see this trend of companies not engaging our entrepreneurial spirit and not understanding that it's because of YOLO. So literally, I left because I felt like I had no choice, there or anywhere, to use my talent in a healthy way. Mark Zuckerberg wasn't my inspiration, though. Let me tell you about two other millennials who are much closer to me, and that's often the case. Is these entrepreneurs, they could be your best friend, your next door neighbor. They're everywhere. It's not just the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world. And let me tell you why companies had a hard time attracting them. Aaron's worked for five different consulting firms, and he has yet to reach his 30th birthday. That might sound like a lot, but that's exactly the point. For him, no company has been able to challenge him long enough to retain him. In fact, on top of his full-time job, he always sees the need to start his own business. And I mean perpetually. We've gone through hundreds of ideas over the years. A few years ago, he started his own online content marketing and copywriting firm, which he grew into six figures in 18 months. He's in the middle of launching two more businesses, again, all outside of his full-time job and on top of that. He's somebody I would say has perfected the art of the side hustle. So, 
For Aaron, what intrigues me is that every single time, he goes through an extremely rigorous interviewing process with these companies. These are all companies that invest a lot of time and money into recruiting and attracting top talent. Yet, he ends up getting the job and finding that it's nowhere near as challenging as the interview. They just don't spend the amount of time and money to, on career planning, work development, manager capability. It's just amazing to me. If you have an employee like Aaron, you need to give them, you need to be prepared to give them meaningful, challenging work and give them flexible work arrangements because top talent, they're always going to have downtime. And that's okay. The question is, are you going to be leveraging their downtime or is he? YOLO for Aaron is all about maximizing the value of his time through learning new skills and doing challenging work. As side hustles become easier and easier to start, companies need to think about different ways to change their work structure to retain top talent like Aaron. Another person who's really inspired me is Jeremy. Jeremy graduated with his master's degree and joined Ernst & Young. Similar to Aaron, he quickly ran out of challenges. At 11 months, he had worked on every single type of project at every level and literally had run out of room to grow. So he quit with a total of 5,000 in his bank account and eventually started a business making Halloween masks. Sounds trivial, but in the first weekend that he launched these masks, he made $10,000. And since then, he's added two more product e-commerce businesses. He is a full-time entrepreneur. For Jeremy, he knows that his life is about innovation and creativity. And companies, they just don't offer the environments conducive to creation. For him and his business partner, it's all about immersive environments. They'll often spend two days straight working on a set of goals, and they'll take a couple days off, but the amount of focus and concentration they achieve during that time, it just doesn't compare to a rigid work structure in a cubicle environment. On top of that, when they're brainstorming ideas, they'll put themselves in real life physical challenges. For example, they'll go to a theme park and ride a roller coaster over and over and over again until they come up with that perfect idea. Now, please don't put me in that environment because I don't think it would be a pretty picture, but for him and his business partner, those are the kinds of things that, those are the kinds of challenges that generate true out of the box thinking. And while you might not want to do that at your company, you want to think along those lines because we need to get to a place where we're seamlessly integrating the digital world and rote tasks with the physical environment and actually getting out there and doing something physically and challenging ourselves. That's what truly gets us to think out of the box. So for Jeremy, YOLO is all about doing the work while having adventure and flexibility because he knows that that's how you deliver creativity and innovation in today's world. Again, these are all things that companies don't often offer. So when it comes to millennials in my generation, you can probably see there's a common theme. The internet and social media really enabled and made entrepreneurship accessible for us. That's something that other generations didn't have. On top of that, whether we're starting side hustles, our full-time entrepreneurs are simply looking for a sexier company to work for. Most companies today are missing the mark when it comes to offering challenging work and environments that enable our productivity and innovation and maximizing our value. And if you're not maximizing our value, you're wasting it. And if you're wasting it, you're not meeting YOLO. So what about Generation Z, those folks who are 20 and below? They're even more entrepreneurial than we are. Shivani Negi is a sophomore at Georgia Tech. She's the co-director of the Startup Exchange, which is a 2,000 plus member organization on campus. She's one of the 40% of Generation Z females that wants to be an entrepreneur. For Shivani and her peers, they weren't just enabled by the internet. They were enabled by a STEM focus, science, technology, engineering, and math. STEM means that Shivani was able to be a part of the robotics club instead of just focusing on band or sports for her extracurriculars. For Shivani, she says that the label of an entrepreneur doesn't even matter. That's so yesterday. It's all about the belief that we can make and create something. And they're getting that belief in high school. STEM was initially created in order to create um, talent for tech jobs in the future. But in reality, it's actually creating more entrepreneurs. So on top of that, 
Gen Z is extremely attracted to the community behind entrepreneurship. It's a community of very passionate, transparent people, all open to sharing knowledge. They don't think that work is a drag. They see work as something exciting to be a part of. Those are often not words you hear when you talk about company culture. And lastly, Generation Z was highly affected by the recession. The college debt reached a trillion in the US last month. Millennials thought there was a value to college. Gen Z every day is debating, is this worth it? At the end of the day, why would I spend money and end up in debt when I could be making money instead? So for Gen Z, often YOLO is about being able to make and create something surrounded in, with a community of passionate people. For Shivani, she cannot fathom not being an entrepreneur. I mean, since high school, I've asked her this question. Was there ever a time you, can't, you can remember not wanting to be an entrepreneur? She, she can't remember. She can't remember the reason why. And she can't imagine a company that has these sorts of qualities. What baffles me is this, is regardless of generation, I was someone who never intended to be an entrepreneur. But after six years of working, I felt like there was no other choice, that I had no other option, that no company would be able to use my talent in any other way. There's something broken with the corporate system if the next generation feels like companies don't enable productivity, enable innovation, enable work environments where it's a community that inspires us. So how do we fix this? Nancy Bache, in her 20 plus year career, has worked for such giants as Coca-Cola, Bank of America, and today she leads talent acquisition regionally for NCR. NCR is a 130 year old company. That's typically what the next generation would say is not sexy. But NCR is doing something really different. They're undergoing a huge transformation from a cash register company to a software company. And this transformation is taking place both internally and externally. For NCR, when they talk about challenging meaningful work, they talk about things like rotational experiences, lateral experiences, and even the work that the next generation considers menial, Nancy would say they talk about it as building the business from the ground up. When it comes to leadership, the next generation expects to be promoted very, very rapidly. But often, that's not what they're looking for. As Nancy would say, they don't know what they don't know. And they don't know the weight of leadership, the weight of talking to Wall Street, the weight of dealing with negative PR, the weight of headcount and budget allocation. I guarantee you, that's not what the next generation is asking for when they ask for leadership or entrepreneurship. There's clearly a difference between being an entrepreneur and having an entrepreneurial spirit. And that's what we want to engage through those YOLO experiences. The other thing that NCR is doing is they're moving to Midtown. And part of that is to build a transparent community. They're actually building a glassed-in lab where as you walk by, you can see the software engineers at work. These are the types of initiatives that companies need to be thinking about in order to survive. Because if 60% of students truly do decide to become entrepreneurs, we're going to have a much bigger talent war on our hands than we think. Not only are we going to be competing with companies, other companies for talent, we're going to be competing with the individual candidates themselves. The entrepreneurial spirit is a trend that's not going away. We're enabled by the internet, we're enabled by STEM, and we're driven by this desire for YOLO. The way that we think about work needs to change, not just for the next generation, but to continue to drive innovation and productivity. So instead of telling yourself and telling others, hey, this is the way it's always been done, I ask you, how are you going to embrace YOLO today how are you going to embrace yellow always? Thank you.